Welcome to Booze on the Rocks, where we make cocktails for everyone. My name is David Edwards, and it's great to have you here today. We're going to make a cocktail called Fade to Pink. Now, it was created by Kimberly Salem, and you can find it on charmedcocktails.com. And while flipping through the net, just looking for a nice layered cocktail to make for everybody, I came across this and went, wow, it looks really pretty. And then I looked at the ingredients and went, wow, it's quite the ingredient list. And you know what? I'm really stoked to try it because I'm not sure how it's going to work out. So does it taste as good as it's going to look? Let's find out. Now, one of those ingredients is a Shiraz infused gin. Now, having said that, the normal way that you would infuse a gin is of course, take some gin, put that fruit or whatever into it and let it sit for a certain amount of time. However, I don't have a barrel of Shiraz wine to you know, soak the wine flavor out of. So what I'm going to do is use a little bit of white gin and I've got some Haymans here and this fantastic red wine called Le Fat Bastard. I'm, I'm not kidding, that's the name. Having said that, we're actually going to do this in a simple one-to-one -one ratio. So we'll get the correct amount of gin and the correct amount of wine, and it's gonna be fantastic. And we're going to start this with a little bit of our red wine and get something that you like that you're going to enjoy. Now, because I don't need a lot of this for the cocktail, I'm just going to make some extra so I can make a couple of cocktails. And we're going to use half an ounce or 15 mils. And to be honest, you don't necessarily need a Shiraz, although it would be nice to get. However, this is a Cabernet Sauvignon, so it's going to be relatively close, but it's gonna be as fantastic. So the next thing, as I said, is a gin. Now I'm using Heyman's London Dry Style Gin. It's fantastic. You're going to use the same amount of a quarter of an ounce. Once you've added those together, you just wanna mix them, and really you don't have to do anything fancy. You don't need to stir it. Just give it a bit of a swirl and that'll agitate everything together and you'll be good to go. But our next step is of course to build the base of our cocktail and for that you need your shaking tin or glass and we're going to start with a lemon. So make sure you give this a bit of a roll. You just want to loosen up the insides. And when I say the insides, you want to open up the membranes a little bit so that when you cut this in half and squeeze out half an ounce or 15 mils, you can pour that directly into the glass. Moving to your second ingredient, we're going to use a one-to-one -one simple syrup, one part water, one part sugar. Just heat it up till it goes clear and you're good to go. But we're going to use a full one ounce or 30 mils. Now this does seem like a lot of simple syrup. However, Based on the other ingredients, it should balance everything out nicely. Your next ingredient here is a little bit of Aperol. Now this will give us a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of color, and some unique flavors to go along with this combination. But we need seven and a half mils or a quarter of an ounce. Your next ingredient is some rum. And for this, we're going to use white rum and I'm using a little bit of lambs and we're going to move this to three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half mils. For our next ingredient, we're going to add some more gin. And for that, we're going to use the Empress 1908 gin. Now, Empress 1908 has some butterfly pea flower in it, so it turns a lighter purple when you add it to citrus juice. We'll use the same amount of three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half mils. Our next step is to shake this with a little bit of ice. Now you could use some cubed ice. In this case, I'm going to actually shake this for about five seconds with crushed ice. And what I'll do is I'll fill the glass up about halfway or so. And then what'll happen is try and be fancy because that really sucked. Give it a flip and shake it with a smile. All right, once you've done that, make sure you pop this off with the strength of a thousand lemons and a whole bunch of other boozes. Put it off to the side and grab yourself a highball glass. In this case, this glass is 11 ounces or 330 mils. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use one, but you know what, it's gonna look fantastic. So what we're going to do now is fill this up with crushed ice. And after that, we're going to pour in enough of our, oops, that's a big chunk of ice anyways, uh, enough of our mixture here, leaving a little bit for just our multiple layers. So what we'll do, just drain it in. Now that you've done that, we have two ingredients to add to our layer. The first is our gin and wine mixture. Now we don't need a lot, we just need a quarter of an ounce and just pour it on top. 
And your next ingredient then is a little bit of the Empress 1908, uh, which seems kind of odd because this is a gorgeous gradient as it sits right now. However, we'll use the same amount of a quarter of an ounce or seven and a half mils. And of course, to finish this off, you could choose to garnish it with something green like some mint, as they do in the, uh, the web article. However, what you're gonna do, grab yourself a straw and give it a try. Mm, really good. It's well balanced. It's just slightly sweet, not bitter. You get a fantastic gradient of color. I really like this. If you like gorgeous layered cocktails like this, take a look after the recipe card right up here.